I want to welcome you to the Medicine Wheel Garden. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Trifolium pretense, that's red clover. It is a very beautiful, very abundant plant. We are today in an incredibly abundant garden and you would have thought I might have chosen something more exotic than red clover to talk about, but this plant offers us tremendous gifts and I want to tell you a little bit about that today. It has three leaves, and that's where its botanical name, Trifolium, speaks to the three leaves. And Praetense is, describes where it likes to grow, which is in meadows and fields. This is a delicious herb. It is sweet like honey. It's wonderful to eat in salads. The seeds are heart-shaped. And the dried flower heads and the seeds can be pounded into flour and added to foods. It is a food that's also considered to be a survival food. It's high in protein and has a lot of minerals. So its medicinal value is many in addition to it being a food. One of the things that we're seeing today is a popularity of microgreens. And clover sprouts are something that you're going to see more and more in the stores. One of its medicinal values is that it does mimic estrogen, endogenous estrogen in the body. And what this means for women is that it helps to balance hormones. It takes up the receptor sites, the same receptor sites that estrogen would. So in a premenopausal woman that has a lot of estrogen in her system, it blocks um, the receptor sites so as to not have too much estrogen, and this is um, helping to prevent certain cancers. For postmenopausal women, it mimics estrogen and then therefore gives uh, more of that to the system. Red clover is in the pea family, and like other legumes, it is nitrogen fixing in the soil. And what that does is it creates fertilizer, a natural fertilizer in the soil, and is gaining a lot of popularity as a cover crop. It is actually one of the oldest agricultural crops that we know of. And what it does, besides fix the nitrogen in the soil, is it has very deep growing roots that aerate the soil. And when used instead of a lawn as a cover crop, it reduces water usage. It also reduces the need for herbicides. Uh, it also reduces the need to have to mow a lawn, which helps in not using fossil fuels for gasoline-powered lawn mowers. So it's very ecologically friendly, um, red clover is, and it is completely abundant. It grows practically um, everywhere, and it seeds very easily but it does need a good, rich soil in order to grow. Another unique feature of this plant is that it has sessile leaves, and what that means is that the very bottom leaves connect directly to the stem. And St. Patrick, when he was using this, er, this plant to um, teach with, he used it as an example of the unity between all people because of the way that that leaf is unified with the stem. The chevron symbol and pattern that's on these leaves is an ancient metaphysical symbol. And I talk about that a lot in my book, Wisdom of the Plant Devas, Herbal Medicine for a New Earth. So I invite you to pick up the book and check out what the devas have to say about the sacred geometry of this plant. I also um, want to mention about this plant's relationship with bees. It would be impossible to tell the story of red clover and not talk about its dependence on the bees. It is completely and utterly dependent on honeybees and bumblebees to pollinate it in order for it to propagate itself. And the bee that loves clover, um, in fact, we wouldn't have clover honey if it weren't for the bees. And in a healthy field of clover, about 500 pounds of honey per acre can be produced. And the bee comes and it trips the little flower head 
that releases the nectar that it gathers. And the amount of nectar that is released is totally dependent on the quality of the soil that this plant grows in. The honey that is produced by these bees, the red clover honey, is and does hold the secret of divine nourishment. This plant's earth spirit medicine is divine nourishment. And I'm talking about the kind of nourishment that happens on all levels, spiritual, physical, psychological, and emotional. It is the kind of nurturance that we received when we were children in a field of clover where we didn't have concern for our personal survival and all of our needs were being met. And that is what the spirit of red clover wants to give, give us, is divine nourishment on all levels. So I invite you to pick up my book, Wisdom of the Plant Davis, Herbal Medicine for a New Earth, and learn more about this plant, about divine nourishment, and about its place in the evolution of humanity.